The movie starts off with a man covered from head to toe, screaming out to the horizon and saying he wants to live. He seems to be very miserable and talks about how he wishes he'd never been born. He thinks about his monotonous and painful life while driving around on his bike. He drives really fast and finally stops as he sees a puppy with its mother. The mother seems to have died so the man slowly walks up to the puppy and carries it. He holds the little animal in his arms as another group of bikers drive past him. The men drive along the long road and the fully covered biker joins them. He screams and hoots excitedly as the other bikers look at his creepy appearance incredulously. The man covered from head to toe is Rick and he has a horrifying life story, but this doesn't stop him from living his life. He brings the dog with him and drives around the city. He finally stops in front of a beautiful house and gets off his bike. Rick then goes in with the little puppy. He opens his bike helmet only to reveal a black leather cloth covering every single inch of his body. The maid of the house tells him that his mother, who was very sick, is finally getting better. She is glad to hear the news. Even inside the house, Rick really doesn't take off his mask or reveal any part of his body. He goes down to meet his father who he hasn't seen in a long time. The two start chatting for a while about his business and potential clients. The maid comes in soon and hands him a cup of milk. Rick sits down with the puppy in his cup, whilst talking about his disease that causes him to cover his whole body. Sunlight is absolutely deadly to Rick and even a small sliver could potentially be life-threatening. Rick's father, Walter, asks him to meet with a healer who is said to have the powers to heal any kind of ailments. Rick quickly declines saying he's been to all kinds of doctors in the world, but none of them were able to heal him. Walter tries his best to persuade him into trying this one last time to see if it really does work. He doesn't really have much hope but agrees nonetheless. Rick and Walter soon drive to meet with the healer, and they talk about their lives in the jeep. Rick talks about his hatred toward his mask and the clothes that he has to wear all the time. He claims that he can enjoy the beauty of nature when covered from head to toe. His friend tries to cheer him up but it's no use. They soon reach the healer who has lots of followers and patience. He really does seem to be a potent healer. Rick meets with the healer who greets him cheerily. The nurse there assists the healer to complete his work. She treats all the patients with natural methods and faith in God. Their way of treatment is really different but people always seem to come to them when in need. The healer takes Rick to a secluded room to examine him. He comes out with Rick a couple of seconds later and tells his father that he might be able to heal him. Walter tells the healer that he'll even pay him a lot of money and the healer agrees. In another scene, we see a group of hippies traveling in their van. They're drinking beer and playing music to lighten the mood. A guy there tries to kiss his girlfriend, Frances, but she turns him down saying he stinks. He curses them out for being absolutely annoying. Her boyfriend tries to comfort her but she clearly wants to get away from him. She's looking out the window when she sees Rick driving behind her. Rick sees her too and they're both instantly charmed by each other. Rick thinks she's really beautiful while Francis is intrigued by the way he's clad in leather and bikes around without a care in the world. Rick's in Yugoslavia now to continue his treatment and there's a festival going around. Francine and her group reach the festival around the same time as Rick. She's fascinated by the people there. She looks around and that's when she spots Rick. She has to leave for work but Rick is still imprinted on her mind. Rick goes to a shop to get his order. The owner there asks him to join the huge festival happening that night and Rick agrees to come. He takes his parcel and leaves into the bustling, singing city. He spots a man just crushing cigarettes because he hates when people smoke. The city is filled with all sorts of people. Rick has a fun time there. He even lets children ride his bike. He sees Francine in the crowd, who's an actress, promoting her act for the festival. Francine sees him too and gets lost while looking at him. She's brought back to reality as Rick leaves. Rick comes back home from the market. He and Walter play around with the parcel before entering the house. The maid tells them that Rick's mother is getting better. Walter and Rick sit down for dinner with all the lights out. After making sure that sunlight doesn't come in, Rick removes his mask to eat. He tells Walter that he's in no compulsion to eat like that in complete darkness, but Walter just says that he likes eating with his son. Rick tells him it's no use eating without even saying who you're actually eating with. Walter just laughs and asks him for some help, but Rick tells him that he is going to the festival. He tells Walter that he's fascinated by the American group there. He asks Walter if he'd like to join but Walter declines saying he'll just stay with his wife. Rick agrees and goes on to talk about the costume competition being held there. He doesn't eat much and just goes back to his room to rest for a bit. At night, Rick watches a group performing a song at the festival. He loves the song they're singing. A parade takes place soon after with attractive girls walking in beautiful uniforms. Everyone dances around a statue while Rick watches them have fun. They celebrate with gunshots and fireworks. A strange man keeps looking at Rick but eventually vanishes. The large statue is set on fire as a ritual and Rick is dragged into the parade to dance. He declines the offer and walks back to watch. He walks into a restaurant to relax but a group of loud bullies start taunting him. The leader walks up to him and demands that he take off his mask but Rick declines. They all think he's really ugly in the mask. Rick walks away into the bar for a drink. Francine and her boyfriend are there drinking too. She's not really impressed by him and throws the drink on his face. Her boyfriend walks away and Rick joins her. Francine looks at him and is impressed. He sits down opposite her and they start chatting. 
Rick even flirts with her as she thinks he's just completely dressed in leather, because of the costume competition. Francine is charmed by him but asks him to remove his mask so they can talk freely. Rick doesn't so is told and is about to leave but Francine stops him. She wears her own mask instead to match the vibes and they start dancing. Francine sees her boyfriend making out with girls so she flirts back with Rick too. She's fascinated by the way he talks in riddles. She tries to pull off his mask to see him, but Rick says no and goes away at that very moment. He drives into the night and finds a small hut in the middle of nowhere. He gets inside and lights a small candle. He's alone so he removes his helmet and caresses his leather-covered face. Rick takes the candle and lays down on the bed just thinking about Francine. He hates being covered but can't help it. He plays with the candle for a while before eventually removing his gloves. His own hand seems foreign to him. Back at home, Walter is by his wife's side almost all the time. He checks on her every time she moves to make sure she's alright. The night passes and Rick comes back home early in the morning. He tells Walter that he was at the festival all night. Walter tells him that he was worried about Rick since he'd been out all night. Rick apologizes saying he lost track of time. When asked about the play he was supposed to watch at the festival, Rick just makes up a false story to tell Walter so that he doesn't get suspicious. Walter asks him to get a couple of hours of sleep since they're going to see the healer soon. But Rick just tells him that he doesn't need any healer, because he knows his illness can't be cured. Instead, he says he needs friends to enjoy the limited amount of life he has. He wants to love and live. He continues saying the healer is a fraud and only promised to help to get loads of money from Walter. Rick claims that none of the healer's techniques are going to work. Walter knows it's true but doesn't want to give up hope. Rick is sick and tired of just living in the shadows. He doesn't want to crawl around at night anymore. He tells Walter that he's getting rid of the leather clothes and mask, because it's not doing him any good and he's ready for the consequences. He tells Walter that it's time to come out in front of the sun but Walter hates the idea. He tells Rick that his drastic step would only ruin the family and that's just a reckless move, but Rick doesn't want Walter to sacrifice and spend on him anymore. He wants to be independent. Walter tells him that he doesn't want to lose him and asks him to be patient, because Rick would hardly survive three days while being exposed to the sun, but Rick doesn't care. Three days without masks seem like eternity to him and he wants to live those three days to the fullest. Walter still tries to persuade Rick that there is a cure for him, but Rick doesn't want to be trapped anymore. He begs and begs Walter to let him live his life because he's just a burden now. Walter is scared to see Rick destroy himself but according to Rick, he's just trying to live a normal life with the hope that he might actually be happy. Rick walks away and Walter just sits there with no words. Rick finally opens his windows and looks at the sun. He's ready. He takes a deep breath before opening up his mask. The mask opens to reveal a beautiful man. Walter knocks on his door to make sure he's okay. Rick is shocked to see himself since he hasn't even seen his own face properly. He smiles to himself while Walter slams the door trying to persuade Rick into not taking such a drastic step. He knocks down the door and Rick smiles at him saying he's happy to finally see himself after all these years. Even Walter is stunned to see his own son's face for the first time and admires how gorgeous he is. The two hug tightly. On the other hand, Francine tries to wake up her snoring boyfriend, Ed. She walks out since he's fast asleep. Rick walks to the beach to feel the sun on his face and the sand on his feet. He splashes around like a little child. He screams and squeals in joy and plays with the dolphins there. Back in the city, the festival continues. Rick goes into the city without his leather gear for the very first time. Everyone is shocked to see him and his beauty. They cheer for him as he enters the shop he always goes to for groceries. Even the shopkeeper is shocked to see him without a mask. Rick is beyond happy and enjoys life. He hangs out with kids and communicates with everyone around him. He finally sees Frances in a coffee shop and joins her. Frances doesn't recognize him without a mask so she acts wary around him. He congratulates her for her awesome performance in the festival last night, and Francis thanked him asking if he was at the festival. He nods and that's when she asks him about the leather masked man. Rick just smiles and says that the masked man is his friend because he doesn't want to tell her the truth. Francis goes on and tells Rick that she'd like to see the masked man one more time before she leaves, because he was just so mysterious and innocent. She talks about how she felt so attracted to him. Rick tells her that the masked guy is actually an antisocial loner, because he has a rare skin disease. He tells her that the only reason the man ever got out was for absolute necessities and nothing else. This makes Francine even more interested and begs Rick to help find the masked man. But the masked man is none other than Rick himself. Rick tells he will fulfill her wishes. As she's about to walk out, Ed and his group yell at her for leaving without telling them. Francis tells them that they don't own her, but Ed starts to get physical with her. Rick steps in and controls himself for a while but Ed crosses his limits. He pours beer on him and insults him. Rick starts throwing punches but instead gets beat up brutally by Ed and his gang. Francis begs them to stop but they don't. She finally gets Rick out and apologizes for Ed's behavior. He tells her it's no big deal and they finally reach his house. Walter is shocked to see Rick's condition but Rick just brushes it off saying it was a small fight. 
Francis meets Walter as he runs out, saying he has some urgent work. Inside, their maid, Nina, greets Francis and prepares lunch for the both of them. Walter goes back to the same cafe where Ed attacked Rick and walks up to the owner. He asks about the people who attacked Rick but he doesn't say it. Walter finally bribes him with some money and the owner points to Ed and his gang. Walter goes up to them and beats them up pretty badly till they're all knocked out. Walter hands the owner some more money for the damages and even punches him for not stepping in. He just smiles and walks out after that. At the house, Francis and Rick just talk to each other while closing their eyes and laughing. They play fun little games. She seems to be really good at reading people and Rick is really impressed by that. That's when Nina calls the two for lunch. They eat and he tells her that he'll try his best to get the masked man for her to meet soon. Francis is excited about it and they drive off again. They're driving when Francis asks him to stop. She runs to another biker in a leather jacket thinking it's the one she's met but it's just some random guy. The guy thinks Francis is interested and tries to chat but she quickly flees. Rick laughs at the fact that she doesn't know, the man sitting next to her is the one she's been searching for. He tells her to listen to him and be patient. Francis agrees and he finally drops her off at the hotel. He asks her to be safe with Ed and Francis tells him that she'll be fine. She asks him to tell her when he finds the masked man and he agrees. Francis thanks him for being such a wonderful man and Rick takes this opportunity to flirt with her. She doesn't reciprocate much and leaves, awaiting the masked man. Rick goes to get some photos clicked as a memory. Just then, Walter finds Rick nearby and the two go to the same bar for drinks. It's almost empty and they both sit and have fun. They crack jokes and laugh but the heat starts to get to Rick. Rick shows Walter the photos while drinking. Walter tells him they're moving to Chicago immediately to reverse the effects Rick has faced up until now, but Rick doesn't want to. Walter begs him to come to Chicago to get his disease checked, since there's a great chance that his condition might not worsen if treated on time. Rick tells Walter that he doesn't want to and claims that he's had way too much just in one day. He doesn't want to live masked up. Walter realizes Rick isn't going to budge so he asks him to meet the healer one last time. Rick agrees under one condition that his father doesn't bring up this topic again. Walter agrees. The two start drinking and the day ends. At night, the two get and continue singing while driving. They both have a fun time and Walter exclaims how he hasn't ever bonded with his son like this. The next morning, Rick calls Francis and asks her to hang out with him, but she says she wants to spend her time alone on the beach. Rick understands and hangs up. He and Walter run around and bond together but the sun starts affecting him more. Walter tries to get him in the dark but Rick doesn't want to. He makes up some excuses and distracts Walter. At the beach, Francis is alone playing with the waves when Rick approaches her but in his leather mask this time. He tells Francis that he's been wanting to meet her, and pretends that he hasn't spent time with her already. Francis apologizes for trying to pull his mask and he forgives her. They sit near each other and start talking about their lives. Francis tries to get him to talk about himself but he doesn't. Rick makes sure Francis stays oblivious about his identity. When she asks him his name, he just tells her to call him the Dark Prince. He tells her to enjoy life with him without many questions. The two get on his bike to drive off but are stopped by another biker. He challenges Rick to a racing game but he declines. The man taunts Rick for being a coward but Francis tells him to race and win. She asks him to kick the other guy's ass and Rick agrees. The racing match starts and they both bike around as fast as they can. Francis cheers for Rick and the other guy falls. Rick gains on him and soon, he wins. The others congratulate him without getting bitter and Rick feels good about it. At home, the healer comes to visit Walter and hands him back all the money he was given saying there's absolutely no cure to his illness. Walter is devastated but doesn't say anything. Rick joins the other bikers with Francis and they celebrate together. They go to the bar and drink but Rick doesn't like it as much. The other biker's girlfriend comes and talks to Francis about Rick. They make jokes about men and laugh. Finally, Francis gets up and starts dancing to the music. She asks Rick to join her but he just watches her. The next day, Rick and Francis go to the beach and Francis has fallen for him at this point. She wants to always be with him. She tells him that he makes her feel happy and free. He offers to open up his mask for her but she declines saying she doesn't want him to die. They go into his hideout at the beach. It's a small cabin but his comfort place. He prepares tea for the two while humming a song. Francis lays down smiling and falls fast asleep. Rick notices this and covers her before getting out and driving off. Rick has also fallen hard for Francis. He goes home and types her name on his computer excitedly. Walter sees this and asks Rick if he's told her the truth. He just says that she doesn't have to since she accepts him for the way he is. Walter is happy for him but tells him that there's a new treatment coming out which could really work. He asks Rick to come with him to Chicago but Rick is adamant about not doing it. He just asks Walter to support him and Walter hesitantly agrees. He just wants Rick to make the right decision and even though it's hard, he will support Rick through it. Rick is happy to see Walter understand and leaves happily. Frances is leaving soon and she sees Rick in the market but without the mask. She doesn't know the truth yet. She greets him as the masked man's friend and talks to him. He's packing groceries when she tells him all about the masked rider. Rick just smiles and tells her that it's his father's birthday. He invites her to the birthday party and she excitedly hops into his jeep. 
She asks him to look for the masked rider in case he's riding around. She claims that she has fallen in love with him. Rick smiles at that and keeps on driving. Back home, Walter goes to a church and prays to the Lord for strength and help. He asks God to not take his son away from him since he's just so young. Rick and Francis drive to the beach to look for the masked rider. Rick tells her he's jealous of the masked rider since she loves him so much. The two go to the cabin at the beach. Rick stays out and enjoys the sun and the ocean underneath his feet. Francis goes into the cabin and looks around. Rick has started getting blisters and sores on his body due to the sun. He finds it harder and harder to breathe now. Francis asks him if he's alright and he nods. Rick decides to tell her the truth but can't seem to own up to it. He tries to kiss her but she pushes him away because she's in love with the masked rider. Rick doesn't know what to do since he's dying soon. Francis changes the topic and they drive back to his house. Walter spends a very rough day, drinking and grieving about his son who's soon about to die. He gets back home late at night. Rick already has sores all over his body but decides to keep it quiet. As Walter opens the door, he sees a surprise for him. Nina, Francis, and Rick congratulate him and celebrate his birthday with music. Rick's mother slowly tries to join in too, as Francis sings a beautiful song to commemorate Walter's birthday. Walter momentarily forgets about the pain and enjoys his birthday as he's showered with gifts. Nina cries in the corner because even she knows that Rick will die soon. The night finally ends and Francis is dropped off at home. That's when she sees the masked rider again. She gets into the bike with him and they drive away. Francis confesses her love to him and they go to the cabin to spend the night. Rick tells her that he loves her too and that he wants to take off his mask. Francis agrees and she close out all the light that pours in. She caresses his face and tells him that he's beautiful. They eventually make love and spend the night in each other's arms. At home, Walter goes back to his wife and tells her that he misses her and even envies her sickness, because she can't even hurt anymore because of all the pain she has endured. He talks about Rick and shows her his photo. He tells her that he's a handsome, young man and that he doesn't want to lose him. He adds that he wants her to come back and wishes for a happy, healthy family. He sobs because he knows that he'll soon be alone in this whole world. Rick's mother starts singing and doesn't even look at his photo, because she can't seem to take in anything that Walter's saying. The next morning, Rick leaves before Francis can see him. He's completely covered in sores and blisters and gets away from her. Francis wakes up to see him gone. She's sad and upset but finds Rick's necklace nearby. She's confused as to how it got there. Rick had placed it for her to know the truth. Rick finally reaches his house and Walter is shocked to see his condition. Rick is dying and very weak. He goes to his mother's room to meet her for the last time. He apologizes to her and bids her goodbye. His sores and blisters are all over his body and they look excruciatingly painful. He bids his father goodbye as well and Walter tells him that he's very proud and appreciates Rick for being so strong. Just then, Francis comes in looking for him. She knows the truth now. Rick hears and runs away again, not wanting her to see his condition. Rick drives off into the sunrise and Francis cries for him. She blames herself for not finding out the truth and the tragic love story ends.